It is my pleasure to introduce our finalist. Uh, the book in question is Jewish-Ukrainian Relations, the 20th Century. The author is Alek Homelsky. Knishka vidana vidavnictvom ukrajinski prioritet v Ukrajini ukrajinsku mowoju knishka nazywajcie jevrensko ukrajinski widnosene 20. stolitia the books jewish ukrainian author analyzes the most painful events in the history of ukrainian and jewish peoples and focuses on the systematic effort of russia's Tsarist and Soviet empires to sow into inter-ethnic conflict. By employing disinformation and historical fabrications to create ha hatred and dysfunction. Relying on recently declassified KGB archives from the Security Service of Ukraine as well as the CIA and the OUN archives. The author seeks to uncover buried facts about several 20th century Ukrainian and Jewish historical figures, some of whom are connected to the most contentious moments in the history of Ukraine and Israel. The author reviews the common aspirations of the Jewish and Ukrainian peoples to preserve their own identity and flight for independence. In other words, the will to survive. The will to survive as the mutual bond that ties both nations together. The author, Alek Hamelsky, is with us tonight, and I invite him to give a short greeting. Zaprosuju pana Melko. Dear ladies and gentlemen, sure. Thank you for having me tonight. First of all, I'd like to thank the Stanley Peterson Fund and its distinguished jury for the consideration of this book. For me, a Ukrainian Jew, the relationship between the Jewish and Ukrainian people has always been a main concern. The wish to see to live in harmony and mutual understanding and plagued by propaganda and anterior agendas. This is why I've written this book to reveal the true, unexaggerated drama of the Jewish-Ukrainian relations in, 20, in the 20th century. To this day, Kremlin systematic and malicious interference in our sovereign independent states and has not stopped. Once it was done by Russian Empire, the same politics continued to by the communist regime and now for the over two decades continues in Putin Empire. By fueling our history with lies and insinuations, they make all inter-ethnic understanding impossible. The facts presented, the classified documents, the e and the evidence collected in this book are meant to prevent the destructive intentions of those wishing to ed eradicate us. I'm thankful for those who have already read the book, who have told me the words I could have only dreamed of, that the book has already become a powerful weapon in the front of this information war. The same war that Ukraine, that Ukraine has been fighting for several centuries in determination to gain complete independence and cease genocide, culture side, and ethnocide of the Ukrainian nation. This book traces history and locates the creation of some of the notorious propagandistic narratives and cites recently declassified archival documents to refute the myths that will poison the relationship between the Ukrainian and Jewish people and are the very the same half-truth and false claims aimed 
at distorting history and wreaking havoc among the democratic allies of Ukraine. Proven again and again, the Jewish and Ukrainian ethnos can maintain their fight against their enemies without despondency, fear, and panic, seeking independence without losing a wicked sense of humor in the most trying situation. Not one to brag, but the very popular song about Putin hails from my hometown, Kharkiv. I would sing it now. I have an ear for music. <laughs> but the <clears throat> but the lyric are very least at, at the very least provocative. <laughs> I would like to mention that exactly fifty years ago, by the invitation of the Ukrainian diaspora in Canada, our city of Toronto was visited by Gulag prisoner at Zionist and by Kremlin definition enemy of the USSR number one and my personal hero, Avram Shifrin. In his speech rallies here, he emphasized that along with the being a Jewish nationalist, he was fighting for the life and the freedom of Ukrainian nationalists, as well as all other nations enslaved by Moscow. In particular, he called to save his friend Yuri Shuhevich, who was then once again imprisoned. Today, I'd like to pay tribute to both of them to some of the most honorable men in history that are yet to be commemorated properly, Jew Avram and Ukrainian Yuri, who left his world only nine days ago. May their soul rest in peace. I'm often asked, Alec, why did you take up the topics of these extremely complex relationships? Why do you, why do you write about Simon Pitlura Arnold Margolin, Yaroslav Stitsko, Avram Shifrin. To answer, I could paraphrase James Mays. Our heroes, slandered and forgotten, have chosen me. Today, more than ever, it is vital to remember this long journey of sacrifices made in the fight for the freedom of self-identification, the right to self-determination. Otherwise, all the sacrifices in the name of independence would be in vain, and the crimes of the next tyrant would be continued. The proof of the importance of the coding history came as a stark reality on February 24th, that the lessons of history were unfortunately not learned, and the true criminals of the past were not convicted. The second decade of the 21st century in Europe is marked with the terrors of war, death under bombs and rockets, hunger, thirst and disease, torture and execution. Children become orphans and cripples, are abused in unmentionable way, along with their mothers and grandmothers. Every person who supports Ukraine's fight is given a piece of his heart, of her heart, funding the victory over the enemy. The enemy which today threatens the existence of entire human civilization. The ashes of our Jewish and Ukrainian ancestors knock on our hearts and demand to tell the world the inconvenient truth, expose the lies, and help the light defeat the darkness. Slava Zahiblin, Volya Zhivim, Smerd Porohan.